Question number 15. Solve the equation, so they give you this equation, for this range of x. So we know that 21 cos square x equals to 8 sine x plus 16. So if you want to solve, we have to make them all become the same. Because here is a sine, right? So if you got cos square and sine, it's very hard. So what you can do is, we can change this become sine. So that you have a quadratic equation. So you got 21. So cos square is equals to 1 minus sine square x equals to 8 sine x plus 16. So you expand this, you get 21 minus 21 sine square x equals to 8 sine x plus 16. So I'm going to shift everything to the right so that I get a positive sine square. So we have 21 sine square x plus 8 sine x. So here is positive 16 and then you bring over become minus, right? So positive 16 minus 21, you get negative 5. So from here, it's basically a quadratic. Here is a square, here got no square, here got no sine, right? So it's a constant. So basically you can do a quadratic factorization. So you get 3 sine x minus 1 and also 7 sine x plus 5. If you don't know what I'm doing here, we can actually substitute this with, let's say we substitute, substitute with y, okay? We can do like this. Let y equals to sine x. So you get 21y square plus 8y minus 5 equals 0. So you can still do the same way. So you get 3y minus 1, 7y plus 5. You can still do, you still get the same thing. Okay, similar. Alright. So now let us continue. So we know that sine x equals to 1 over 3 and sine x equals to negative 5 over 7. Okay, so from here, we have to find our reference angle. Reference angle. Okay, so the reference angle is what? We got two different reference angles. Huh? So the first refer reference angle is, so sine inverse 1 over 3, you get 19.47 degree. And then the reference angle for this, the second one is, um, please, when you do sine inverse don't write the negative. Huh? Whenever we want to find the reference angle, we don't really put the negative. So from here, we get 45.58. Okay. So, how, what are you going to do next? We have to know which quadrant, right? So the quadrant is all signs teacher are crazy. So for sign to be positive, it's going to be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. And for sine to be negative, it's going to be quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Okay, so this one is quadrant 1, quadrant 2. This is quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Okay, so now we can find the x value. So our x value is, so the first we are going to do is the first two quadrant. So the first quadrant is going to be the same, so 19.47. Second quadrant will be 180 minus 19.47. So you get 160.53. Next, this one is going to be quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So quadrant 3 is going to be 48.58 plus 180. So you get 225.58. And the last one is going to be 360 minus 45.58. So you get 314.42. So these are your answers. Question B. Diagram 12 shows a vertical clock tower with height of h meters on the horizontal ground. So we know that this whole thing here, the height is h. Okay, h meters. A spotlight is at d. So here is the spotlight. There's a spotlight here. Such that the angle of elevation of d from b is 25. So that means this, if I got an angle here, this angle here is 25. Okay, so what the question is asking, express tangent 25 
in terms of H and P. Okay, you know what? So this one, you see we have 50 here, right? And they asked for 25. So this should already give you a hint. What is the hint? The hint is we can use the double angle, right? So double angle states that tangent 2A is equals to 2 tangent A over 1 minus tangent square A. Okay, this is the double angle. So, since it's the double, right? So, we can use tangent 50. Tangent 50 equals to 2 tangent. So, this A is half of the 2A, right? So, half of 50 is 25. 1 minus tangent square 25. Okay. So, how are we going to solve? We know that this is tangent 50, right? So, we can use trigonometric ratio. Tangent... 50 is equals to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is H and the adjacent is P. So we substitute H over P equals to 2 tangent 25 over 1 minus tangent square 25. Okay, so we uh, cross multiply. We get H minus H tangent square 25 equals to 2P tangent 25. So we can rearrange this such that we get a quadratic equation. Okay, so I'm I write here. So we have, I'm going to shift everything to the right. Lah. So I get h tangent square 25 plus 2p tangent 25 minus h equals to 0. Okay, so from here, how are we going to solve for tangent 25? I don't know whether you notice this. It's actually a quadratic, right? So it's actually the same as this. If we assume tangent 25 equals to x, uh, so you get hx squared plus 2px minus h. So how are we going to solve? We can use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is what? x equals to negative b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 2a so we can use this to solve all right so from here we know that tangent 25 is equals to because tangent 25 is x right so that, that means tangent 25 equals to negative so wait by the way what is a b c in this case the a is h b is 2p and c is negative h so a is h b is 2p C is negative H. So negative 2P plus minus square root B square. So 2P square minus 4AC over 2A. So you get negative 2P. Now, see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this positive only. Why? I'm not going to put negative because... We know that tangent 25 is going to be in the first quadrant, right? This one here is going to be in the first quadrant. So if it's in the first quadrant, it's going to be positive. So it's going to be 4p square plus 4h square over 2h. So you can factorize the 4 inside. So you get p square plus h square over 2h so this 4 you can actually square root right so you get 2 so negative 2p plus 2 p square plus h square over 2h so this 2 and this 2 you can factorize and you can simplify with the bottom 2 there okay so your final answer you will get is negative p plus p square plus h square over h so this is your answer.